All right. We're on page 163 at the very top. He just met Miss Thomas. And remember, that's like the singer in Mr. Calloway's band. She could tell I didn't know what that meant. So she said, I'm the singer, honey. I said, pleased to meet you, ma'am. She laughed and stuck her hand out for me to shake. There were about nine diamond rings on just her right hand. She said, oh my, a gentleman. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance as well. Then she shook all those ringed fingers and rubbed them across my cheek, held my chin and said, come here, child. She pulled my face up close to hers. Uh-oh. I twisted up my face to get ready for a kiss, but instead she looked real close and said, what's this, baby? She rubbed her fingers over a couple of the sting spots that I'd been scratching. For a second, I was going to tell her that they were vampire bites, but something told me to tell the truth this time. I said, that's just the hornet stings, ma'am. I got bit up when the Amoses locked me in their shed. Then she turned to twist her, th it was her turn to twist her face up when who locked you in what shed? They were people the home was paying to look after me. I got bit by their fish head guards. I showed the woman the bite on my hand. I was surprised to see it was puffing out some pus. My Lord, she said, Herman, this child's hand is infected. None of you men noticed how he looks? Herman E. Calloway said, talk to James. As far as I know, he's the only one who looked at the kid. Mr. Jimmy said, well, Grace, to be truthful, I did think the boy's face was a little swole up, but you know how dark it is in the cabin, and by God, there are some folks who just naturally have lopsided heads. She said, dark or not, even blind Lemon Jefferson could see something's wrong with this baby's eye. What happened here, bud? She touched underneath my eye, as light as a feather. I said, well, ma'am, Todd Amos walk, woke me up by shoving a pencil all the way up my nose to the R. And when I went to punch him, I slapped him instead. And it left a big well on his cheek. So he put up his dukes and went at it. And it didn't take long before I knew I couldn't whip him. So I just curled up and fell down. I looked at Herman E. Calloway to make sure he was listening to that next part. I wanted to let him know that even though he was real mean, our minds thought about things in the exact same way. I said, I fell down, ma'am, because the Lord gave me this sense to know when enough is enough. He acted like he didn't hear. So I kept talking to Miss Thomas. Then the Amoses came and I could tell they'd gone through my suitcase, even though they promised they wouldn't. And she locked me up in the shed where there's hornets and fish head guards got hold of me. Miss Thomas looked like this was some real amazing news. Hermony e. Calloway said, sounds like a case of diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. Miss Thomas gave him a dirty look and said, you said the home, bud? What kind of home? Where's your mama? I said, she died four years ago, ma'am. She put her hand on my shoulder and said, I'm sorry, sweetheart. How about your daddy? Do you know where he is? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, where is he at? I pointed dead at Hermony e. Calloway's big belly again and said, that's him right there. Miss Thomas looked like she wanted to smile, but said, now, bud, I've only known you for a couple minutes, but I can tell your mama did a fine job of raising you up. I can see you've had a good, proper upbringing, so I'm kind of surprised you're pointing like that. She was right. I brought my finger down and said, I'm sorry, ma'am. She said, that's fine, but it wasn't me who got pointed at. I told Hermony Calloway, I'm sorry, sir, but I didn't mean it. She smiled and said, that's better. We all make mistakes. You know what, bud? You look like you could use a good meal. So why don't you sit right here and join us? She pointed a ring crossed finger at an empty chair direct, aside, direct across him. Shucks. How could anyone enjoy their food with Hermione Calloway staring back at you? But maybe my luck was starting to change. As soon as I sat down, Hermione Calloway picked up his coffee cup and said, if you'll excuse me, this is about where I come in and walked over to where the band was sitting. He told them, all right, someone's got to give me a seat there and go sit with James and Miss Grace. Oh, and my son. For a second, it looked like a stampede of the dusky devastators of the Depression. All jumped up at once and started heading for our table. They saw what they'd done, laughed, and said, yet he said, take my seat, Mr. C. I want to talk to the kid. He's got the look of a future sex man about him. He came over to our table. Miss Thomas asked me, do you mind if I order your supper, bud? I said, no, ma'am. I can't believe you got to order what you wanted. I thought you just sat down and they'd bring you whatever was on the stove. Remember, he's never been in a restaurant before. Um, Y'all ready, Miss Thomas? Miss Thomas said, we sure are, Tyla. Tyla said, who's this little fella? Did y'all pick up someone new for the BAM? Miss Thomas laughed. They're getting younger all the time, aren't they? This here's Bud, and he's going to be our guest for a while. 
so I want to impress him with something special. Tyla said, well, you know we brought him to the right place. It's nice to meet you, bud. I said, pleased to meet you, ma'am. She said, ma'am, mercy, Miss Thomas, your guests have some real fine manners. I can tell this isn't one of those rude, crude folks Mr. Calloway usually scores up. Steady Eddie said, Tyla, I'm crushed. She said, bud, I apologize for mistaking you for a musician. I told her, that's okay, ma'am, no offense taken. Miss Thomas said, is there any more of that meatloaf left? Yes, ma'am, sure is. How about some okra and mashed potatoes too, bud? Thank you, ma'am. Does a glass of apple cider sound good? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, she said, I'll have the same. Jimmy ordered a supper that was all the way different from mine and said he Eddie ordered one that was all the way different from his. No wonder you hear about rich folks going to restaurants once a week. This was great. Miss Tyler went away and Miss Thomas started back on me. But I've got to let you know, I'm pretty sure that there's no way Mr. C is your father. Tell me what gave you that idea he was. My mama did, ma'am. Miss Thomas looked over at Jimmy real quick and said, sweetheart, did you know a whole lot of people all over the state know Mr. C? Did you know he's pretty famous? No, ma'am. Ah, uh, well, you know what I think? I think maybe your mother heard about him on the radio or heard somebody talking about him or saw a band somewhere and told you Mr. C reminded her of your father. You misunderstood what she meant. Is that possible? I don't think so, ma'am. She looked at me for a second then said, did she come right out and say your daddy's Hermione Calloway, bud? Well, almost, but not in words like that. Then tell me what the words were like, honey. Uh-oh. It's going to be hard to explain to Miss Thomas about Mighty Maples and hints from flyers. As long as I kept Hermione Calloway being my father to myself, the whole thing made real good sense. But as soon as I tried to tell other folks about it, it seemed like maybe it was something, it was something some stupid kid had dreamed up. Like it was wishing and hoping instead of something true and real. I looked down at my suitcase. Well, I could tell my luck was changing. Before I could say anything, Miss Tyler was at our table with the tray. Miss Thomas reached across the table, patted my hand, and said, We'll talk tomorrow, bud. I bet you're sick and tired of answering people's questions, aren't you? I said, Yes, ma'am, I am. But I did notice that she said tomorrow. That might mean they aren't going to send me back to Flint right away. Miss Tyler said, Miss Thomas, and set a plate in front of her, then said, Mr. Jimmy, and set some food, and set his food, and gave him some food too. Then she said, Steady, and put his plate so that it rattled the litter, then said, And finally, the young gentleman. The plate was crammed with fruit in front of me. It was the best meal I'd ever had. And when I was done, Miss Tyler brought me dessert. She called on the house, which if you don't know what that means, it's like free. Like she's giving him dessert for free. It was a piece of warm sweet potato pie with some fluffy stuff called whipped cream swooped all over the top of it. So Bud had never even heard of whipped cream before. Because remember, he doesn't like, you know, have like the luxuries of other people. After I shoved the last crumb of pie in my mouth and scraped up the little dribbles of whipped cream, I looked around at the people at my table and couldn't help breaking out with a big smile. I didn't see it before, but now that I looked, I could tell that Miss Thomas must be the most beautiful woman in the world. When she talked, she moved her hands and fingers around, and the lights from the ceiling and from the little candles on the table would bounce off all them diamonds and sparkle up in her eyes and make you feel like you'd been hit with some kind of magic fairy dust, and then you couldn't help but smile. All the while, she'd hum to, but hum doesn't mean, but hum doesn't seem like the right word for what she was doing. Most time, I'd hear humming before it's just an excuse for not being able to sing or something people do if they didn't know the words to a song. Uh-uh, that doesn't fit the sound Miss Thomas was making. You couldn't help but look up and wonder if it was a real human being that was making these sounds. What her humming reminded me of most was the feeling you get when you walk barefoot on a railroad track. For a long time before you can see it, you can feel the train coming right up through the bottom of your feet. Her humming started slow and easy at first, but then, just like you could feel the train shake a shake a shaking from somewhere far off, after a while, Miss Thomas's humming made you feel like something big and strong was passing right by you. And everything on you was getting rattly and shaky and about to get shook loose. It made you want to drop your fork and grab hold of something solid. From hearing just a little bit of humming, I could understand why Mr. Jimmy didn't call her a singer. Singer wasn't good enough word to take in the kind of music that was jumping off Miss Thomas's chest. And I didn't notice before how Mr. Jim, how funny Mr. Jimmy was. The stories he was telling about traveling around the country with Hermione e. Calloway had us all laughing so much that even the nosy people at the other tables near our Near ours, quit eating and were busting a gut and throwing their two cents into the story.
The only table that was quiet was where the dusty devastators were sitting. It seemed like Hermione Calloway could make it so that you just wanted to sit and watch your hands with a sad look on your face. I hadn't even noticed how nice Steady Eddie was either. He talked out of the side of his mouth and kept his eyes kind of blinked halfway open, especially when Miss Tyler would come over to our table to see if we were all right, which she did a lot. And he was the first person I'd seen who could eat and talk and laugh and drink and sneeze and whilst keeping a toothpick dangling out of his mouth. No matter what he'd do, the toothpick always stayed dancing just below his mustache. And when Steady Eddie took his time to show me how to hold my lips and how to put my fingers like I was really playing a pretend saxophone. I'm not sure exactly what happened. If it was when I was scraping up the last drop of melted whipped cream or if it was when Miss Thomas's fingers got to fling in all the magic fairy dust, but something whilst I was sitting in a sweet pea, another seed got to sprouting. Something in the smells like heaven place. Another mighty maple started digging down its roots and grabbing holt. One second I was laughing my head off. The next second I was feeling surprised because something hit me. Just as hard as Snaggletooth McNevin had smacked Hermione Calloway, all of a sudden, I knew that of all the places in the world I'd ever been, and this was the one, that of all the people I'd ever met, these were the ones, this was where I was supposed to be. And Herman E. Calloway could kiss my wrist if he thought he was going to scare me out of this. I was going to take more than a grunchy, old, bald-headed man with a tremendous belly to run me out of here. I was smiling, laughing, and busting the gut so much that I got carried away. And some rusty old valve squeaked open in me. Whoop, zoop, sloop. Tears started jumping out of my eyes so hard I had to cover my face with a big red and white napkin that was on the table. I hadn't seen this... I hadn't been this embarrassed since I woke up and found Miss Sleet looking at my legs. I could tell that everyone in the seat, sweet pea started stopped laughing and talking and had started looking at me, but I couldn't quit bawling. Mommy used to tell me I'd only get one chance to make a first impression, and looks like I was blowing it with the dusky devastators of the depression. Remember, he doesn't even know the last time he's cried, and now he's in a restaurant with all these people and he's crying. Shucks. Finally, I put my face in my arms on top of the table, and I put the napkin over my head like it was a little blanket. Because try as hard as I wanted, it didn't look like I was going to get this doggone valve closed up anytime soon. I felt Miss Thomas' hand come up under the napkin and rub real soft and slow back and forth over my head. She pulled me out of my chair and into her lap and wrapped her arms around me and bounced me up and down on her knee. Dangy, I'd never had any kind of reputation with the band now. The only thing I could do was hang on to the napkin and try to make it so folks wouldn't notice how wet my face was. She said so quiet that I was the only one who could hear it. Okay, baby. Okay. I know, sweetheart. I know. Then she started humming again, and with my ear mashed up against her cheek, it felt like all my bones and muscles quit doing their jobs. It felt like something as big as a steam locomotive engine was chugging, chugging, chugging right past my ear. I wasn't sure if it was her lips or her hands, but something whispered to me in a language that I didn't have any trouble understanding. It said, go ahead and cry, bud. You're home. All right, we are going to stop there for today. So, bud is crying, even though he hasn't cried in forever, since he doesn't even know when, and he just had the best meal of his life, and apparently he gets to stay till at least until tomorrow. So we are going to stop reading there. You do not get off yet. I have talking to do. You already have an assignment posted on Google Classroom. It is um, a review question and answer from chapter 13 or 14. So just like we've done in the past, you're going to find a question. You're going to make the question on your own from either chapter 13 or 14. You're going to tell me the chapter. You're going to write the question, capital letter, question mark, and then you're going to write the answer, okay? So you're creating your own question, just like we did before for chapter 10. No, yeah, for chapter 10. Now you're doing it from chapter 13 or 14. I don't care which one. Of course, this recording will be posted. Tomorrow, we will not have a live lesson. Tomorrow, you have a ReadWorks on a Native American tribe, since you guys have just learned about that in uh, social studies. So no live reading RTI tomorrow. You have a ReadWorks assignment and you have the assignment from today that is due by tomorrow, but you still have 12 minutes left in reading RTI, which is probably enough time to finish your assignment today, like right now. Are there any questions? If not, you are free to go and I'll see you in either a math RTI or reading.
Make sure you log off, please. Isaac, make sure you leave.